chat box where we talk about everything beauty, health, and wellness. I'm your co-host, Shayla. Hi, and I am Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, how's it going? It is going good. It is, is Black History Month. <laughs> I got to do the moment. Of... <laughs> there you go. There you go. so cute. So how's everything going with supporting Black businesses for you this month? Um, <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, I'm supporting myself and, you know, <laughs> and I'm black. No, no, I'm just kidding. We're going to get into, like, how you can support, like, black-owned businesses and things like that. But, um, <laughs> all right. So, it, it sounds like Shayla ain't doing what she's doing. <laughs> well, I've been indulging in uh, black-owned restaurants. Okay. Well, what's the most recent one you've been to? Um, Davis Street. Oh, I think I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what you get eating. That's some good <laughs> Um, I always get their snapper. Oh, I haven't tried their snapper. I know it's bomb. Yeah. I already know it's yeah, bomb. Yeah, that's some good eating. So that's definitely date night vibes. So ladies, you know, go ahead and take a minute about that mm-hmm. one. Who I haven't been out to eat? They just been at home. Okay. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> What's happening? <again? laughs> this month is going by fast too, but you know. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's the shortest month of the year. Mm-hmm. However, we this is a leap year. Yeah, it is a leap. Oh, so yeah. we get one little extra day. Yeah, that's but, true. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into our hot topics. Okay, that'll be there. Yeah, we're we'll ready to get, get into it. it. Let's get into it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, our first hot topic we want to talk about uh, black women in sports. Mm. Yeah, um, apparently, like, for a lot of cyclists and people who are competing competitively and have to wear helmets or I mean, even basketball players who have to, like, they're constantly sweating and it's hard to manage their hair. Um, they're, they're struggling, especially trying to put the helmet over some natural hair. Listen, so I was an athlete, right? So I didn't let all that sway me when I played sports. Um, I also swam. <laughs> you know, that was also like a little taboo thing for black women. Um, but what they're saying is black women are seven times more likely not to be active or to play some kind of sport because of their hair. Wow. Right? So we're putting so much emphasis on our hair ladies that we're not even getting outside. Come on now. But I see yeah. what... <laughs> Ooh, that's wild. <laughs> well, you know, just think about it. So you have a lot of women, you know, oh, I don't want to sweat my hair out. So mm-hmm. they don't want to work out. Or I don't want my hair smelling like outdoors. Yeah. So I'm not going to go outside. Like, or what do I do with my hair under this helmet? Like, it doesn't fit. You mm-hmm. know, like, I have to wear some other helmet that's not actually protecting me. Yeah. And then, like, you know, you think about the gymnast mm-hmm. and how folks was roasting baby girl with her hair. And it's just like, you know, not everybody knows what to do with their hair. A lot of people are so active and mm-hmm. it's, it's not a priority for them, you know, because they're focused on their, their sport or the task, or their workout. Um, So not everybody puts that much emphasis on their hair, but it does cause a lot of black women to not just want to be active at all. Dang. Yeah. I mean, the struggle's real. I mean, so for you, like, did you swim at all when you were younger? No, I was more of like an artsy kid. So I was more like in choir and like like arts. I wasn't too athletic. Um, Mm -hmm. I did used to run in... PE and was asked several times to be on the track team, but girl, I ain't running no heat and uh, see, see, exactly. I was because my hair is just a lazy number. Yeah, but, but you see what it is yeah. like, you know, we have all these, you know, like it, it's too hot outside, you know, I'm be sweating, you know, we have all these things and it's just like, it's okay. You know, like if you want to, you know, you want to do these things, go ahead and do them. If you want to get in shape, you're going to have to, some is going to give, right? So, you just have to figure out a routine for yourself when it comes to the maintenance of your mm-hmm. hair or trying to figure out styles that are easy to work with as you work out. Yeah. I kind of wish that I would have did track. Because like, I could have learned discipline, like, you know, sportsmanship. There's so many things that I could have learned early if I would have just joined. But that's true. And then, like, the lazy. ladies now, like, they don't care. They'll step on a wig in a minute. You know, mm-hmm. they'll step I mean, <laughs> woo, it is wild. Like, I'm sitting here watching the the athletes, you know, the NCAA, well, not, not NCAA, um, the basketball girl is yeah. out there and, you know, they're wearing full wigs. Never in my day would I have seen that. And, and, and the lashes to go with it. And then y'all yeah. seen the thing about the girl whose wig fell off mm-hmm. and the team members are helping her. Like, that's a real thing. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't even imagine wearing like a wig. <laughs> like a wig or playing basketball. Like... <laughs> I mean, so my wig has fell off for less. Like, when I was younger, like, 
<laughs> just the wind blew a little too hard and I had to like, like whoa, hold on. I can't even imagine. Like, yeah, but it's a different world out there now. So mm-hmm. for sure. All right, so we'll transition into the next hot topic, um, which is the Black History Month and education, right? So, you know, there's so many limits and stipulations on what can be taught and what can't be taught. So I'm just curious, if you were a teacher, (laughs) how would you go about maneuvering through and teaching your students? I don't know what I would do as a teacher. I feel like, I I mean, you kind of have to just, number one, you have to do, you have to teach what you're told to teach because Mm -hmm. there are the teachers like Hawks Mm -hmm. these days. So it's kind of like you have to do that. And questions come up like, what do you say? Research it on your own? Like, <laughs> should you tell the kids to do that? Like, you know, I don't know. What would you do? They're going to have to fire me because I'm going to go rogue. <laughs> I'm going to go rogue. I'm going to let all my class know about, you know, what's going on and the real the real deal mm-hmm. on certain things. And so they kind of want us to cover over or skate over certain things. But that's, that's our reality. That's Black people's history. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually the world's history, right? So it's not just affecting people of color. But that affects everyone. And so just like they want us to teach about certain things in other communities, I'm not going to name mm-hmm. it, but it seems like it's taboo for us to mention anything dealing with us and the struggles and slavery and things like that that we've gone through. Mm-hmm. And they even be sugarcoating some of the stuff that, you know, <laughs> some of these other people they praise mm-hmm. have done. You mm-hmm. know, they only mention certain things about it. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to quit. Kudos to the teachers out there. Man, <laughs> shout out to all the teachers out there. Because y'all, y'all go through some things. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, ain't no you way. You got to people back kids. Like, uh, the, the district can't even let you teach stuff that's true mm-hmm. and real. Mm-hmm. And yeah. No way, Jose. Okay. Well, I guess we can get into our topic for the day. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is harmony in history, amplifying uh, Black culture during Black History Month. Um, So we're going to get into some of the questions, and um, we'll go from there, guys. But before we get all into that, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Make sure you like, comment, and share this to someone that you may think it may be beneficial for, all right? All right, so we're going to get into the first question of today. Um, And in your opinion, why is it important for everyone, regardless of race, to actively participate in Black History Month? Well, I I think that one thing that I've noticed is it's tough sometimes for people of other races to empathize with the Black community because they're not exposed to it. They don't Mm -hmm. really know what's going on other than what is presented in mainstream media, which, (laughs) I mean, y'all know, like, they don't present Black people always so amazing in mainstream media. Um, So I think it's important to to look into things on your own, like, make sure you... you, you educate yourself on the culture and like black history. That way you can have more of an understanding of the black experience in America. And Mm -hmm. hopefully you can treat your neighbor better, you know, (laughs) um, because of that knowledge. I like how you said um, to try to touch base so that you can empathize with someone Mm -hmm. else, right? Because currently what what they're touching base on is our art culture. Right. Mm-hmm. So that is our music. That is the way we dress, our hairstyles, our look, our lingo. They'll take that, but they don't want to understand where all that comes from. Mm-hmm. They don't want to understand us as a people. So this is definitely the perfect time to be able to do that. Absolutely. Or even like seeing the news and like, you know, like you thinking that like every black person is I'm like, scared. Scared. Yeah. like you should be afraid yeah. because yeah. they're aggressive and like loud and yeah. angry come on now yeah. yeah like this perspective is is, is skewed you know by the media so yeah, yeah. absolutely all right so uh, what are some of your favorite initiatives um and how they contribute to amplifying and supporting black history month in the culture okay well you wanted to lay it on that didn't you okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of my faves i would say uh, black women for wellness that is a good one because, again, we've touched on this on a few topics. We need to get active. We need to take care of our bodies, our mental health, our physical health. Um, so I really love that organization. I'm also a fan of the Urban League and the mm-hmm. NAACP. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they have local chapters within your state that you can join and be active in. Um, the NAACP is the most, is the longest running 
uh, black organization that we have. So I know there may be some little stigma and things, you know, some controversial <laughs> things regarding the NAACP uh, or maybe some of its members, but overall it is a great organization that everyone can kind of be in involved in in some sort of way. Um, and then I just learned about one, um, it's called the African American and the Arts. Um, and they do a theme every year. And this year it is about the arts. And um, and that's just not, you know, like art. You know, it is more so like visual, literature, um, film, music. So everything dealing with the arts, even culinary. Um, okay, so that's awesome. a great one that you can get involved in as well. I love that. You know, I'm an artsy girl, so. <laughs> totally yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, one of mine is the Center for Black Health and Equity. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that facilitates public health programs and services. So I think, you know, it's important to get our health together, like you said, not just mental, but also our physical health, making sure that we understand nutrition mm -hmm. and, you know, the importance of nutrition and also certain diseases that are common in the black community, mm -hmm. like HIV, AIDS. Come on. Uh, <laughs> and now syphilis is on the rise. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really like that organization. Okay. So um, could you recommend a few must-read books by some Black authors that have left a long-lasting impression or impact on you or in the Black community's life? Yeah, so I had to kind of dig into like personal like books uh, that I've read um, by Black authors. So I, you guys will probably know some of these. So this first one, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings Ooh. by Maya Angelou. That's a classic. <laughs> and I have not read it. Oh, you, well, you, you might like it. You should you should read it to see. It, it kind of just covers Maya Angelou's like, life. Okay. And I think it's a good representation of like the female, the Black female experience mm. in America, especially okay. during that time period. Okay. Um, she went through a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> be, be prepared to like you know oh, that Lord. <laughs> okay so I gotta be mentally ready to read that book okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then one of my all time favorite movies and uh, books is There Are to Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston and the reason why I love this book <laughs> once again <laughs> and so the reason why I love this uh, book is because it kind of goes through like the journey of um the main character in the book and her experience like living through life like having to navigate like marriages and then she finds kind of like her freedom like in her 40s and she kind of is able to really like embrace like her life and the things that she loves and she hmm. experiences you know a good strong love that has a tragic ending oh <laughs> no. so be prepared okay. be prepared but it's really just you know a coming of age kind of story okay. you know, like a woman that I think is <laughs> so uh, apparently Tiffany needs to step up her, <laughs> her, her reading game for one because the books that I would mention you'd be like what yeah you know I'm more into <laughs> and I'm almost ashamed but I I love this Arthur and and then when he passed away I know there were plenty of people that were like oh my gosh but Eric Jerome Dickey was one of my favorite black authors. Oh, uh, he, he does he write all those romance? He books? did. Those, those, those are classic. Those, those are classic. Those are some good books, but yeah. they weren't. You know, I mean, they were entertaining, right? Yeah. But they weren't. Um, you know, like that soulful educational. educational yeah, but kind I mean, of. still, like it still ex shows a certain part of black culture and like you know the it way does. and like the black experience and love. I'm gonna have to step love. it up. I'm gonna have to step it up. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I saw so many like when I was researching this. So many new books that I hadn't mm -hmm. read from like new authors that I'm like okay I need to put this on my list like I have a long list of stuff to do so I'm not just going back to my Angelo and, <laughs> and why the cage burns <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> <a> modern stuff <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> so for someone listening who may want to take media action and really uh, immerse themselves um, to support black history and black culture mm -hmm. what do you recommend they do in order to support oh. for black well history? Uncle Funky Starter actually made a post at the top of Black History Month on some things that we can all do to just get started, right? So the first main thing and the easy thing is to buy Black. Buy Black. So supporting some Black-owned business, whether they are local or online, um, there are different forums where you can type in Black-owned businesses. I know Beyonce had done a whole list of different um brands that were black owned oh she did that uh, yeah and then like you know like for us we're in the beauty industry right mm -hmm. so you can look on different um 
retailers. So like right now, Target is doing a whole uh, Black History Month. So all of the Black-owned brands there, they're highlighting those. So you can support those. You can shop at H-E-B if you're in Texas because uh, they're doing a special spotlight as well. And then, you know, some of the other retailers as well. Um, so that's going to be the first thing is to buy Black. Absolutely. Second of all is to get active in some kind of organization or initiative in your city or state. So you can go online and do searches for black organizations near me and then just kind of research and see what their mission is, you know, what the purpose is behind it and get involved. Absolutely. So y'all get going and you have a couple, <laughs> you only got 14 days. So you got 14 days. Black and make it happen. Late. If you haven't started, I don't know what to tell you. Like you're not supporting the way you should. Right. <laughs> but then don't just do it just in February. Do it all yeah, year yeah. round. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So our producer is going to give us some famous quotes from some influential black history figures throughout, black figures throughout um, history. And our job is to guess who said the quote. And we get points for our correct guesses. So, <laughs> me, I'm a player. I'm a player. No, I can't lose another game. It's so, all right, Tiffany. Get with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bessie Coleman. Wrong. Shirley Chisholm. No, I was going to say. It was Shirley C. Chisholm. Okay. Uh, I know it wasn't the, the uh, B. Yeah. That quote, I think, is pretty good. I mean, we've had to do that. <laughs> right, it's three. We still do it now. We're still, now. We, we still <laughs> bringing phone tables, okay? Story of our lives, like. <laughs> or folding chairs, rather. Okay, all right, go ahead. Now we got to bring the whole table, too. Yeah. Like. <laughs> B. George Washington. No, that was Martin uh, King. Martin, oh, Martin, okay. Martin King. Okay. okay. So that one talks about justice. Yeah, I mean, that's so, so true. Like, honestly, this whole thing, like, in general, is just dumb. Like, the fact that we have to be segregated and that this is a problem in general and that we don't have justice is like. But then when you look at it, his fight was like in the 1950s and 60s, yeah. right? So that wasn't that long ago. It so wasn't. we're still dealing with. A lot of injustices um, for sure across the board in the workplace, you know, just <laughs> yeah, like I just in general. Yeah. yeah, you know. But anyway, B. Yes, I got one more. <laughs> I know I love my Angela. Uh, yeah. Was that from the cake break thing? I don't think so. Was that okay? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the quote in general, I mean, this is humanity, right? We should all feel like once we know better, to do better. To do better That's right. a good person. You should just do better. Yeah. We can't plead ignorance all, yeah. all our lives. Angela Davis. <laughs> hey. It, it shows the character of the hater, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I would say that. B. A. C. C. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's why because I know the Alvin Ailey Theater. That's why I was like, it could be him. I am Jello X. Uh, yeah, Malcolm X has been knowing. Like, okay. Man, okay. <laughs> have you seen the movie? 
Yeah, so with uh with uh Denzel Washington. Washington. Okay, yeah. so again. I don't remember that though. Uh, Maybe it's the tone of the voice he sang it. Uh, <laughs> you gotta say it in a more of his voice. Uh, it was at the end when they were all like, he was like, they were in Africa and they were had, no, they were in the States and they had all these different kids and they were all saying, I am Megumix. Oh, uh, okay, I do remember I the am kids and stuff. Like. <laughs> Well, this was a really good episode. Yeah, we had, hopefully you got a lot of information from this and you're able to support some initiatives. And hopefully I can get on my black author reading list. More. Listen, I need to up <laughs> my my reading game tremendously. Like, uh, come on now, like uh, Tiffany, you gotta get it together. But uh, so thank you for introducing me to those new books. I'll definitely be sure to check those out. And for you all, definitely continue to support. Um, the black culture and the black community throughout the year, not just in February. Yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. Make sure that you like, share, comment, engage with us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>